handing out smiles with Clara LaFaro next on the Chris Top Program. The Top, broadcasting worldwide on iHeartRadio and Spreaker.com. Oh, I like to wobble in the studio. I feel at home and I'm halfway good at it, so I always see progress. I am, however, guilty of not unleashing the wabba in other parts of my life. The subject of math rarely ever sees any wabba love. Relationships, health, never taking things for granted, works in progress. Well, I guess it's okay to wabba most anywhere. Well, it may sound a little dirty if you decide to wabba in the shower. I mean, it's not dirty. Well, it could be, I guess. Anyway... Where do you like to wobble? This has been a Chris Top production. <laughs> you can either talk in the Chris Top program. Mr. Top. Take it from the side. And here. <laughs> Portions of the day's programming are reproduced by means of electrical transcriptions or tape recordings. <laughs> you can either talk in the Chris Top program. I am. The Chris Top Program. And I'm the one and only Chris Top, broadcasting live from our lavish studio apartment here in sunny Clarksville, Tennessee, with an ocean view. Yes, it's studio apartment, didn't I? Uh, Son of a! Ah! In our lavish home studio. I thought I was past that. And now. then I almost said apartment. Yeah, I thought I was past that. No, well, you know, old habits die hard. Yeah, we, they really I, do. Yeah, I did it for years there. Uh-huh. And this is still new, so we got to get used to Speaking it. Speaking of old habits, I'm really proud of you. Oh, you, you cut soda. I mean, I, dude, I, I did too. But I mean, I'm super proud of you. I'm proud of you too. <laughs> it's been it's been a good solid month uh-huh. since we had a soda, and I noticed. But we're gonna have one on Christmas. Yeah, at the movies. Yeah, because we're going to see Star Wars. Yeah, that's an exception. Going to the movies yeah. and having a Coke with your popcorn is the one exception. Well, it's those big cokes though, so it's gonna be like we're gonna have a gallon of soda. It's Ooh. probably going to make us sick. Probably. I hope so. I hope it does. I don't, don't want to get sick on Christmas. Well, I'm hoping that we don't feel feel it until after Star Wars is over. I hope we don't feel it. Because I don't want to like start drinking sodas again. But but um, my skin looks better. I have more energy. I think more clearly. I mean, there's just all kinds of positive stuff coming from it. Yeah. I don't feel as bloated all the time. Amen. Ditto. Yeah, which is is good. It's all positive stuff. Yeah. And I mean, I'm drinking water right now. Yeah, water. Yeah. I'm drinking hot H2O. tea. H two O. Hot tea right over here. I'm I'm I think I have enough hot tea left to get through this, so I'll probably have to make some more for the next one. But it's um, it's honey. It's like that that natural honey. It's like real honey that Eileen gave me. Uh huh. Legit. And it's, yeah, you have to get a backhoe to like get it out because it's like <laughs> it's so hard to squeeze out of the bottle. Wow. It is, but it, it goes good with the tea. So it's like a lot of honey, a lot of hot water, and then the tea. That's too much work. Yeah. That's way too complicated. But, I mean, I'm starting to be more self-conscious, though, because there's so much bad stuff and processed sugar. So, I mean, it's like this is all natural, so it's, it's good for me. So you want to eat healthy, too? I'm so proud of you. I'm getting there. <laughs> I mean, you know, we didn't eat too healthy last night. No. That's no. okay. It's okay to cheat. I mean, it was seafood, and I think most of it was grilled, but still is like grilled in butter, probably. Like eight pounds of butter. Well, we had a cheat day, so that's okay. I, I just burped into the microphone. <laughs> I'm not really on a diet. I just cut out sodas, quit smoking, and you know who knows what else. Who knows what else? Yeah, see, I don't have a problem with drinking. I really don't drink. So, mm-hmm. I mean, alcohol is not an issue for me. So, 
you know, I'm doing pretty good. I'm, I'm trying to take baby steps because if, if I try to do all this at once, I'd go nuts. Yeah. So it's just gradual. I mean, there's still times that I want a cigarette, but I just don't smoke and then it goes away. And sodas, I noticed it's the first week was, wasn't tough, but there were times that I wanted it, like really wanted it. And I just didn't. And it went away. But now I want one less and less all the time. Mm -hmm. So that's good. And I, I had a sparkling orange water the other day and it was really good. It tasted super sweet. Um, which before I'd tried one back when I was drinking sodas and, and it wasn't as good. Yeah. But now it's like, wow, this Whoa. is terrific. So, I mean, I could probably get away with drinking those from time to time, too. Mm -hmm. I do want to welcome everybody that's in the chat. We got JP in here. Uh, we got Sonia. Sonia. And we also have Intername. Intername. In the chat. Wow. Uh, he says, I'm listening to Lynn Lichty while I wait. Good song. So, Thank Lynn, you, Lynn is super talented. She really is. She really is. I'm really excited about having Claire on the show. Yes, me too. She's a pop artist, and uh, she's phenomenal. And I've got some, uh, well, there, there's things I'm going to save and say to her. <laughs> yeah, but Sarah says, I gave up soda years ago. Now I only drink once in a great while, but I drink Blue Sky All Natural when I do. Blue Sky. Blue Sky. What that is sounds that? refreshing. Blue Sky. Blue Sky. Send me a link to Blue Sky. Blue Sky. <laughs> 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 it sounds empowering. It does. Uh, okay, so we've got Clara LaFaro coming up next on the Chris Top program. Did you ever think you could afford an interior designer? No, way too expensive. Besides, I've got style. If you had style, we wouldn't be having this conversation. Ouch. Interior designers are for rich people. Magnolia Emporium. Magnolia Aquarium? Is that like for some crazy flower fish? No, Magnolia Emporium. Randy's clients range from nurses and teachers to musicians, actors, and even some royalty thrown in there. Oh, I'd be on the royalty side. You really don't have any swag, do you? No. No, I don't. That's where Randy comes in. He listens to exactly what you want, whether it's spoken or unspoken. Okay, if you mean he can read my mind, there's lots of things I don't want Randy to know. No, he has a great feel for what he does. Okay, where can I find Magnolia Emporium? Just go to magnoliaemporium.com. We want your space to reflect your success. to wish you a very Merry Christmas. This has been a Chris Top production. <laughs> you can either talk in the Chris Top program. Mr. Top. <laughs> you are absolutely, positively, 100% for sure in the right place. This is the Chris Top program. Both show. You know, something we didn't mention earlier, and I always mention this like every episode. Well, I'd say 90%. Uh, we don't take you for granted. I promise you that. And we never, ever will. Because there's a million other things you could be doing. But guess what? You chose to listen to us. Makes us feel pretty darn good. Mm -hmm. It does, doesn't it? So we've got Clara LaFaro on the show today. Clara, I did not know you existed until yesterday. Ah. And... I've got to say, I have been missing so much because I was so impressed. Craig, Craig sent me a, a text, and I and at first I didn't know who he was. Uh, he he sent me an email, and it, <laughs> there was no subject line or nothing. And it said, "Well, um, you know, can we talk about getting on the show?" I said, "Well, send me some links and some publicity, blah blah blah, whatever." And um, and then he said it was Craig, and I said, "Well, okay, let's go ahead and, and get her book then because I trust Craig." 
Yeah, so do I. Yeah, so <laughs> so then I started listening to your stuff, and I was absolutely blown away. Uh, mm. And I'll tell you, I'll tell you who you sound like. You sound like Clara LaFaro, and that's a big compliment. Mm-hmm. Um, mm. When I listen to your stuff, you don't sound like anybody else, which is great. And I've got three songs, Watercolors, Other Side, Just Smile, and every one of those are different. But I love them all. That makes me so happy. Do you say this to all your artists that pop on the show? Well, they usually pay me um, <laughs> to say this. No, I don't. I really don't. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm so happy. I'm so happy to hear it. But it's so refreshing. I mean, I, I feel like I could buy your album and, and none of it's going to be the same. I uh, like that. Yeah. It's just a 180 on every song. And I... I, I put them in order of my... I'm going to let you talk in a second, I promise. But I, I, yeah. I'm not done complimenting you yet. Um, but I, I'm going to save... I put them in order of my favorite to my least favorite. Okay. No, my least favorite to my favorite. That way. Uh, mm-hmm. Not to say I, I don't like the first one. I love the first one, but it just sort of in order. Okay. And I'm not going to tell you what order it is either. You're just going to play it. You're just going to have to You're just gonna have to guess. Oh. And then <laughs> <laughs> So... So, okay, so tell me a little bit about yourself. I mean, how did you get started? I Because mean, the music business is nuts. And, and I hear people, I mean, you've got all the time, you see beautiful people with great voices, uh, and it's got to be a little intimidating. So, I mean, how did yeah. you get started in the business? Um, honestly, I got started because I couldn't help but sing all the time and make music. Um, so I, I thought I... Um, when I was a kid, I, the thing that made me the happiest was singing. And I also played piano. Um, but when I was applying for colleges or like when they did that kind of student placement thing, I went through the yellow pages and like looked for a recording studio in Toronto that, cause I grew up in Toronto, Canada that I could, uh, internet. And I found out about Berkeley in Boston mm-hmm. and, um, I thought I was going for music therapy cause that seemed like a practical thing to do. Um, but I was already writing poetry and a little bit kind of dabbling with songs and I just like kind of exploded into it while I was there. It just came so naturally to me. And I, I kind of tried to leave because you're right, it is intimidating and it's hard and it's gruesome. This, and it it's only gets kind of harder as there, just like you said, you didn't know I existed. There's so much music out there. There's there is. so many artists. And, um, but, you know, there's certain jobs in life that are jobs and careers. And then there's vocations. And I really think that music is a vocation. And when it's just like, integral to your being and you can't do anything else you kind of have no choice so at least that part is eliminated and you just try to do good work you know well you do phenomenal work mm-hmm. thanks uh, absolutely i couldn't stop listening to your stuff um and i, I want to talk about all the songs right now but i'm trying to save it and, until we get started now i, I want to go ahead because we've got three songs and i want to go ahead and play one now and then we'll mm-hmm. come back and we'll, we'll talk some more but i want to kind of let everybody know uh, are we going to pop and what the fuss and is about jam and break not start. <laughs> yeah, we will, but not on the first song. Now, the first song we're going to play, uh-huh. it's called Watercolors. I knew it! <laughs> <laughs> She's psychic. Oh, and Craig, Craig said my check was in the mail, by the way, too. I am a little bit psychic, just so you know. <laughs> Slightly psychic. Hey, Craig said my check was in the mail. He told me not to tell you that. Okay. About all the compliments, but anyway. Uh, so, so, Watercolors, <laughs> what, uh, where did this come from? Did you, you wrote this yourself? Yeah, I I co-wrote that song with uh, two co-writers of mine, Rich Sokolow and Peter Wastrel. Okay. Um, And um, I'm a huge fan of Anne Sexton. She's a poet. Mm -hmm. And uh, she wrote this song called um, For My Lover Returning to His Wife, um, which is a really intense uh, song. Did I say song? She wrote this poem called that. And um, I loved the imagery she used about how she was just a watercolor and she washed off and Mm. his wife was real and solid. And that idea, I took it and I kind of painted this idea of love that just kind of, you think it's real, but is it really? And it just washes off or it washes away. And me kind of craving that love that sticks, that's unconditional and that um, is stable, you know? Sure. So I was singing about someone at the time that I was dating who who I felt so much love for, but I felt like just washed away and, and wasn't, mm-hmm. I couldn't hold on to him, you know? 
Isn't that funny? I mean, it seems like uh, throughout life we have so many of those encounters and, and you feel like it's real at the time. And then yeah. somehow it just it just goes away. And it could be in a matter of a day. Yeah, it's crazy to me. It is. I always blame it on women. I just figured it was their uh, fault. What? <laughs> so that's what we're supposed to do. <laughs> exactly. Come on. <laughs> you know, we're struggling too. I know, I know. We have our struggles. Oh, we've been fun. We'll just blame men for everything. You're supposed to be preaching the good, you know, like. I got in trouble. How is this positive? I got in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> but now this is a good song, and I think it's it's a good song in a way that it lets people know that they're not alone out there. Yeah, exactly. All right, so this is Watercolors, Clara LaFaro, right here on the Chris Top program. Woo woo. Piercingly deep watercolors. Mm -hmm. I love it. Clara LaFaro. The lyrics were good. I mean, you couldn't pop, lob, jam, and break to it, but you could do a little swaying to Not the to music. that one, but it's coming up. You do a little swaying like this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's kind of, it makes you think. It kind of takes you to a different place, doesn't it? Yeah, it's like. Yeah. 
It's like, you know, I'm driving in my car late at night. It's raining outside. I'm thinking about some stuff, some mm-hmm. deep stuff. It's a deep stuff. Yeah, thinking song. it is. It is. <laughs> we already love you, Clara. We do. Aw, I love you guys too. Oh, see? See, she likes us. <laughs> hey, hey, can you cook? Yeah. Oh, so you should cook for us sometime. That would be great. Yeah, what's your specialty? Anything Italian is pretty Yes. Oh. Yeah. I love Italian food. Oh, I'm yeah. down. I'm down. You're with my it. best friend now. Just let us know when to be there. Okay, next time you're in New York, you're invited over. Okay, don't let Craig come cuz I want more for us. Okay. <laughs> don't let Craig come. Now, he wanted me to ask about your recent writing trip in LA. Oh, okay, yeah. Um, we went to LA. We went to Nashville. I met him. We drove out to Nashville from New York and then flew to LA together and wrote six songs in less than two weeks and recorded pretty much all of them. Oh, wow. What? And uh, yeah, it was really intense. Um, and we're, we're writing partners and we do so well together. Mm-hmm. Um, and already, I think we have one of the songs, one of the artists he's producing is recording one of the songs. Um, it's a problem. Mm-hmm. And uh, we got a licensing thing happening with another one of the songs. And, I mean, there's just stuff happening already, and it was just, I don't know, a month ago or a month and a half ago. So um, it was an amazing trip. It's, it's, it was like a writing tour is kind of what I felt like it was. Mm-hmm. Like instead of playing a show in every little place we went to, we wrote a song, and it was really yeah. cool. Yeah, well, I guess when you've got talent, you know, it's, things happen quickly. Dude, that's Bows. That's I Bows. Guess. That's yeah. Bows. I mean, you take, you take talented people like Craig and Claire and put them together, then, you know, good yeah. things are going to happen. Dude. Yeah, and I think it's also that we, um, being a songwriter is a funny thing, you know, you kind of create your path as as you go and you have to have a lot of vision and Craig is someone who has amazing vision and makes makes stuff happen, you mm-hmm. know, he doesn't sit around and twiddle his thumbs and whether it's in like an idea and a song and creating a beautiful song or uh, getting me to meet you, you know, mm-hmm. it's just when you have motivated people that are inspired and, and really want to do good work, like we said before, I think it's sky's the limit you know, we had a listener so. in the chat say that that's a lot of songs in two weeks is yeah, that i was about to say that too. yeah is I that feel like that's a lot yeah is that typical like when you get together and in, in that and under, under those circumstances or i or, or can you really say that i mean i know so, i hear some people say well i wrote this hit song in 10 minutes but then some people it took mm. me a year to write it right it always depends on the song but these we we prepared ourselves like we scheduled writing sessions with really great writers out there and then we kind of reached out to them and said what are we what's our goal what are we writing for does anyone have any ideas and then we kind of each came in with little ideas based on what we were going for mm-hmm. so we were all really prepared in some ways it's not like <clears throat> a mystery you know sure um and then and because we had that many sessions if we were going to be pros and show up and and be amazing, then we really had to be focused and and do that. And Mm. that's kind of all we focused on the whole trip. So, um, I think, I think it, it it was definitely hard. I think if we like were out drinking a couple nights and then had a session, had two sessions the next day, we probably wouldn't have written great songs. (laughs) It wouldn't have been great. Right. (laughs) Yeah. Okay. Let's get this over with. I need to go home. (laughs) Yeah. We were, we were super focused. (laughs) That's just really cool. Like I'm, I'm blown away that you were able to produce, uh, that many songs mm-hmm. in two weeks. Yeah. Now, yeah. now, okay. Craig says, okay, stop talking about me. Huh? <laughs> my, my favorite one is called Cha Cha Boom. That you could change. Cha Cha Boom. See, now, Cha-cha okay. Boom. Now, I haven't heard this one yet. Now, you're, you're teasing me. Cha Cha <laughs> Boom. Well, it's just a tease because I don't have it yet, so you're going to have to wait for it. <laughs> I like that. Well, just, hey, make sure that we're, like, you know, we're one of the first ones to hear it, though. Can you Can please you? make okay. a t-shirt that says Cha Cha Boom? Because I want one. <laughs> Isn't it good? Isn't it's it good. such a good title? It's, I don't know even know what yeah, I don't know what it's about, but it's stuck in my head already. <laughs> it's its own thing. You'll see. You'll see. <laughs> okay, so so you were you were born in Toronto. Uh, yes. How old were you when you moved to Brooklyn? Uh, well, I I moved to Boston when I was nineteen, and then here when I was twenty one. So, what kind of a culture shock was that, if any, when you went, coming from Toronto to to Boston? It actually was a huge culture shock for me. Um, I, I grew up, my parents were immigrants from Italy, and I grew up in a very, like, Italian neighborhood and, and just a very kind of European upbringing. So um, really when I got to Berkeley, what I, what I loved most about it is there are, are musicians from all around the world, and I, and I love culture. I love learning about other cultures and languages mm-hmm. and all that stuff. So I really gravitated mostly towards, like, 
the group of Italians, the group of Swedish people, the group of South Americans, the group, you know, every, all different stuff. Mm -hmm. And that was amazing. But in terms of American culture, and um, I hate to say it, you know, in this bubbly chat, but um, something that I felt was such a more pronounced thing here mm -hmm. um, was racism. Mm -hmm. um, where I grew up, I really didn't feel a lot of that going up. And it was, I'm from Toronto, it's super multicultural. Mm -hmm. It just didn't feel like this heavy weight that everyone was carrying around and everyone just seemed more open to each other's culture. And, and, um, and it was hard. It was hard when I got here because I felt like it was just tougher. I don't know how to explain it. Sure. And, you know, and I, I think and I think you're absolutely right. And I I really think that that things change. And I think that uh, everybody's a work in progress mm -hmm. and it's getting better. I think um, yeah. it, it seems to take sometimes it seems like it takes one step forward, two steps back. Um, yeah. yeah. Like for us, you know, we, we live in, in the south and you would think that uh, at times racism would be worse here. But in our community, it's actually close to uh, to an army base. Mm -hmm. And you have a, 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 a wide point. variety of, of different cultures in this area. So it's may not even be as prominent here as it would be some someplace like in Boston. Right. Um, possibly. So it, it's really kind of hard for me to gauge it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, but I do know from my own experience being born and raised here, you know, it's people are ignorant, I think, for mm -hmm. a while. And, and that's okay until you get the information and you start to learn. And if you don't grow, then that's not good. Um, right. Yeah, but uh, you know, yeah. I, I've changed a lot in the past twenty years. Mm -hmm. I think. I think. I think you know, as time goes on, everybody does, and I mean, hopefully, mm -hmm. hopefully for the better, so. You know? Hopefully so. And hopefully yeah. for the better, you know. Yeah. 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 Yeah, but it was it was a culture shock. I mean, that's just one little way. That's a long conversation, but it mm -hmm. was it was really different for me. And I grew up with a very in a very kind of conservative, strict Italian family mm -hmm. where I literally I hadn't slept outside of my home like for like sleepover or anything before I left to go to Berkeley. So oh my goodness, were you, I was were you scared? So innocent. Were you scared? So like yeah. Oh, I bet. Now, how long did it take <laughs> you to get over that hump? A long time, I think, to really get over it, um, to just understand that there's six people in my family, always thinking about everyone and, and just the honestly, the idea of being alone and just thinking about myself was very weird to me. Um, so uh, it was it was interesting, but I'm I'm glad I did it. I mean, mm -hmm. look, I would have never had this life or this even this chance, I think, to be a songwriter and to be making all this music if I just went to school in Toronto for mm -hmm. music therapy. Oh, know? I'm giddy like a schoolgirl so. that you made the move. I'm so happy. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> yeah, I've got three new favorite songs now, thanks to you. Cool. Um, now, I've got uh, uh, Tegan in the chat. She says, uh, I was just in L.A. It's beautiful. Did you go to the beach? Uh, you know what? We didn't go to the beach. <gasps> oh, ouch. Ugh. ouch. Why didn't we go to the beach? I don't Am know. I wrong? I don't know. supposed to go to the beach. <laughs> we are supposed to go to the beach. We went to Santa Monica and we were really close to the beach, but I'm, I'm a bit of a workaholic and that was like my day to catch up on all my mm. business stuff. Mm -hmm. So I think Craig might have gone to the beach, but I didn't. Oh, he's a wow, slacker. I'm he's so like, lame. you stay yeah. here and work. I'm going to the beach. <laughs> wow, Craig. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I know what happened now. Uh, okay, so I've got a, I've got a, uh, a question to ask you. You ready? Mm, yeah. Okay, you might want to take a deep breath. Okay. <sighs> okay. Are you, are you sitting down? Yes. Okay, okay. So if you could have any superhero power, what would it be? Uh, it would be the power. This is a power for myself or a power that I give to other people too? Probably however you want to do it. It's okay. your power. Yeah. Um, I think the power of self-acceptance. And, oh. and self-love for myself and for others, mm -hmm. uh, because if we could all be kind to ourselves, and and then then we would be we would all be kind to each other too. Oh, so can I give you a hug um, when I see you? Aww. Sure. So, okay. <laughs> it makes me feel that. all fuzzy and warm inside. She can bring us a big plate of lasagna. I can give her a hug. Oh yay! <laughs> yeah, I would like that superpower. I mean, that's, I really that's... want like some Italian food now. <laughs> Uh, maybe I'll maybe I'll bring you some like Zeppelin in my in my carry on or something. Oh <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh. now we're talking. Now we're talking. <laughs> okay, so okay, so we've got about fifteen minutes. I want to make sure we get these other two songs in. Uh, right. Now, if if I want to stalk you a little bit, hear your songs, buy your music, how do I find it? 
Uh, well, you can get my music online on iTunes, Amazon, all that good stuff. Um, my Facebook band page tells everyone like what I'm up to and where I'm playing or what songs I just wrote. And that's facebook.com slash Clara Lofaro music. Uh, my Twitter is just my name, Clara Lofaro. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and my Instagram is just my name, too. So all that. Ah, now, do you want to do your PSA, Allie, your public service announcement? Yeah, I okay, do. Okay, go ahead. All right. So these artists out there, they're making songs, and they mm -hmm. want to make more. And to make more, they need money. Mm -hmm. And they can't get money if you're out there with your little software being like, mm -hmm. I can steal music. <laughs> no, no, right. no, no. You okay. can't buy it. Skip the cup of coffee. Skip the whatever it is you're doing. Skip that. Mm -hmm. and one buy. cup of coffee is five songs, right? Yeah. yeah. One cup. One mm -hmm. cup of sticky coffee is five songs. Mm -hmm. So buy those songs and don't steal them. And furthermore, if I catch you stealing, I will hunt you down. Oh, my goodness. That's so loud. <laughs> wow. Okay, so uh, other, I love that trick. She, I know she's, she will hunt you down too. It's crazy. I will. I will go to your house. <clears throat> okay, will. so I will. So we we just went from a really I think deep touching kind of song, and it, and it, to me it feels it felt like there's a little bit of bluesy in it. I don't know. Um, yeah. Now we're going into a song that just it just says, "Hey, I'm Clara Lafaro. I'm a badass." Uh, this song is called "The Other Side" or "Other Side," and. I don't know. When I hear so this song, like, I just want to like just I've beat my chest. I've got friends on the other side. I just, <laughs> I just ah. want to beat my chest. Cool. When I hear it. So where did this song come from? Um, it's supposed to be empowering. It's about taking risks and um, like following your dream or whatever it is in life or, or getting up when, you're, when you feel like you have no more hope or things fall apart again and again and again mm -hmm. and being brave and living through the scars and and doing it even though you have no idea what you're doing doing it anyway mm -hmm. um that's so that's the that's story of my life about. yeah me too yeah i'm winging Definitely. this whole thing i don't know what the hell i'm doing neither do i <laughs> 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 but but you you make it up as you go and you keep trying and just like courage is such a powerful thing and to not you know it, I, 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 there's something I thought of recently that I've been saying to myself. It's one thing to be afraid. We're all afraid of so many things, but it's another thing to be afraid and do it anyway. Mm, and that's that like, is good. That's pretty much what that song is about. That is so good. I, I, want, I want that quote. That's actually a really great. good quote. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe when you autograph some stuff for us, you can write that on there. Yeah. Okay, us. I have to take notes because there's lots of stuff. I, I know. I'm asking that. a lot. I'm so needy. <laughs> I am. You're needy. So, so while Clara's <laughs> taking notes, we're going to listen to the other side right here on the Chris Top Program. This could be bad. This could be the best I've ever had. Before I blame, it's a long way.
Okay, I know you classify yourself uh, in the pop genre, but you rock that song out. Like a bouse. Yes. Ah, thanks. I mean, it's... So it's, what do you think? You think I'm more rock? Uh, well, I mean, like I said, you know, we, we're going to go from that into just smile. Oh, right. And right. it's like a total 180. Mm. I mean, every one of the songs. I, if, I, if I didn't know who you were and I listened to each one of those songs, I wouldn't know you were the same person. Oh, wow. Yeah, and and I think that's I think cool. That's cool, yeah. Yeah, because when I when I buy an album, I like to I like to have, have some, some variety. variety. Yeah, on yeah, there. Yeah, me too. Yeah, so me and too. you and you nail it. Um, Thank you. Craig says it's a hit. So so you co-wrote that with Craig. I did. Yeah. Craig and I both went through some pretty life changing experiences this year, like some really hard things, very separate things. But mm-hmm. when we sat down to write that song, um, I mean, I think that's what that song means to both of us. Is like kind of sometimes it's really hard to pick yourself back up and um it's almost like i don't know you're an athlete and you're injured and then you really you know you got to get back to the game and you have to heal even though you kind of just want to sit on the couch and and eat potato chips and watch tv Uh Mm -hmm. um but like that's what it that's really what it's been about and we've been kind of empowering each other throughout this year and we put we put out the single and it's just been a, a really helpful thing to have like our little anthem you know leading us along so oh it gets me it gets me pumped yeah, yeah oh, like, let's go i can't listen to it before i go to bed or i won't sleep <laughs> you have all no. kinds of ideas and <laughs> dreams and plans <laughs> right <laughs> first thing in the morning though i could uh yeah. okay now if you had an opportunity clara to sit down with anybody and this could be anybody throughout history anybody living dead doesn't matter you've only got five minutes to have a cup of coffee with them who would it be it would be uh, martin luther king Martin Luther King. Yeah. Well, I guess I, that's a great choice. Yeah. I don't know if anybody's. I, I, we probably had a couple of people yeah, say know. maybe. I don't know. I don't know. So, what would you talk with Martin about for five minutes? Um, I would his speeches and the things he did, uh, especially at that time in history. Even though when I was a, like a little girl, um, I read about it, and mm-hmm. I really didn't know a lot about you know, that, that time in history, like I was a little, little girl, but he just, maybe partly because I was a poet and a dreamer and I had my head in the clouds all the time, but his, what he preached about and and his bravery and his courage and, and the way he tried to use love and dreams and to, to change the world, you know, Mm -hmm. um, was so powerful to me. And I just really would just want to sit with him and try to understand his courage and where it came from. Sure. And, and, you know, I I look at somebody like Martin Luther King, and I and it and it's hard to find uh, people throughout history that truly followed the footsteps of Jesus. Yeah, and and I feel like he probably comes closer yeah. than than most. And I, I'm not a, a history scholar by any means. Um, yeah, you know, but so, just that wisdom and that yes. like clarity, mm-hmm. that clarity that he had. You know, because we we all have moments of that, but to really just be so focused and, and, and sure. centered and know that it's, it is, you're right. It's like a Jesus mm-hmm. quality and it's amazing. Absolutely. It, it sounds, yeah. Absolutely. Well, yeah. you see, I, I love having you on the show because uh, you know, we look for, we look for talent, but just as equally, just as important. We look for people that, uh, that have a big heart that are kind people because that's the kind of stuff that we want to have on the show. We want to mm-hmm. put, put out a positive message. And, and I yeah. think, I think you've, you've pretty much nailed it's a, that for It's us. a no yeah. douchebag zone. Right. <laughs> yeah. I love that. <laughs> uh, okay. So we've got one more song and I do want to play it before we, uh, before we have to go off. Um, now, now this particular song, I cannot hear this without just, well, the first time I heard it, I just automatically loved it. Um, and I'm sure I've probably seen the commercials, but it didn't, it didn't really click, I guess. But, mm-hmm. uh, but I, oh, I have now, but I've, I've seen them. I've seen your, um, the, uh, what, what was the company? Vanity, Vanity Fair. Fair. Vanity, Vanity Fair. Fair. Napkins and paper products. Yeah. So I went back and I watched, <laughs> I listened to the song first and watched the video. It's, it's a fun video too. And yeah. and then I watched the the ad and I was like, oh, that's so cool. Uh huh. You know, yeah. I mean, so those are pretty legit looking napkins too. Yeah. I mean, I want some now. Yeah, those are so, those are those fancy <laughs> ones that we don't even know what they're called, but we all use them for like Christmas dinner. You know. Did they give you like a like a few years supply for doing the commercial or what? You know, I thought of asking them for that, but they yeah. didn't. <laughs> that would have been kind of cool. Yeah. 
yeah. some green napkins, please. Anywhere you go, I have a Vanity Fair napkin with my logo but on it. But it's funny because yeah. whatever, you know, we would have, I would, I would see them at someone's table, I'd kind of feel like, well, you know, those are kind of like some kind of like ownership towards those napkins. Like, those are kind of mine. You know. <laughs> They're your napkins. I'm the voice of the commercial. So. <laughs> <laughs> now, did you write the song for the commercial or did they? No, they found the video on YouTube. Oh, um, how cool is that? Yeah. That was really, it's like the best way something could happen, really. Yeah. How loud did you scream when they contacted you? Uh, pretty loud. <laughs> <laughs> over and over again. Every yeah. Time they, every time they renewed it, I screamed a little bit louder. <laughs> so yeah. it went on for four years, is that right? Yeah. Yeah. That's impressive. It is. That's really impressive. So, okay, so I want to play Just Smile, Clara LaFaro, right here on the Chris Top program.
Okay, so tell me, what would it take for you just to follow me around everywhere I go and just sing that? Right. Ah. Uh. I mean, just, just every time I walk into a room, <laughs> you could just be singing Just Smile. She wasn't ready for that question. Yeah, I know. Um, <laughs> with, like, with, like, my top hat and just, like, dancing around. And yeah, <laughs> and we could have, like, a – you could carry around, like, a boom box with you or something with the music. Yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah. could we work, could we work something like that out? Or I mean, it sounds like a fun video. No, I mean like forever. He wants to do like it forever, like for good. I mean, if you could just walk around like yeah. anytime, walk through, then everybody's just happy and dancing. <laughs> I think that would be great. A great way to live. That would be fun. That would yeah. take many for a little while. Yeah, for a little while. See, she's see. I don't. I don't think she's bought into it. No. No. I wouldn't be bought into it either. I mean, I've got to use the bathroom. i got to <laughs> yeah, eat and sleep. Right. Come on. You know, normal things. But you'll be happy all the time. <laughs> that's right? true. That's true. And everybody <laughs> else would be happy with us because they'd be giggling every time they looked at us. So, hey, yeah. do me a favor. Yeah. Try to come to CMA Fest in June. Yes. yes okay. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, you and Craig, and, and if you guys can come, let me know as soon as you as soon as you find something out, and then we'll invite you back to, to the big dinner with us the last night. All right, we'll, we'll so do that. We'll, we'll hook you up. We'll hook you up. Yeah. But just let me know as soon as you can. Okay. All right, because I want to make that I happen. plan the trip. All right, now, so if I want to come and see you live, like, is there anything coming up? Yeah, I'm playing the Blue Note in New York City, a late show, um, February 26th. Um, so that's my next show. Now, are you going to play all these the, these three songs that we just did? Or Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. sweet. It's a 90-minute set, so I'll play a lot of songs, but I'm definitely going to play those at and how many albums do you have out right now? Uh, I have three full-length albums and two EPs. Okay, okay. So so there's lots of music that people yeah, can, can go out and get. Yeah, I write a lot. Okay, so. good. I can't wait yeah. to hear more. I yeah, really can't. we'll, we'll share more with you. I'll send you more. Yeah, s- send them to me first because I like to feel special. I'm going to just send them to you. Sweet. Don't tell Craig. Okay. Just, Even but, though we're on the air and he can hear us? Uh, he's probably not paying attention. You know. he's, hey, he's probably like, he's driving right now like out of state so he might have like made a left turn and his don't name, listen to popcorn. chris top program and drive his name in the, his name in the chat is uh craig rockstar wilson that's his thing <laughs> but you know it says will so there's no well, yeah What's it, up didn't, with that? it didn't he didn't have room for everything oh, okay it, so, it was it was we'll it sew. was probably like um like it's, Ten sentences long. So I just yeah. instead of putting his full name, he had to make sure that rock star fit. <laughs> right. in there. Yeah, that's like way more important. <laughs> well, Clara Wilson sounds like a detective. In it does. Yeah. Clara, we love you to death, and and I'm so happy that we uh, we discovered you yesterday, and mm-hmm. and I know uh, the people that listen to the show are going to be equally as happy and and entertained for hours and hours with your music. I'm sure. Oh, yeah. Aw, that means so much to me. Thank you so much. I'm really happy I met you guys, too. Yeah, I'm going to watch the video again after we're done. Right? And yeah, then dance around. Like, you have to ham it up. Pop really and bad. lock and yep. jam and break. Maybe yeah. we can get a cardboard cutout of Claire and, and just then, drag it behind us. Can you send me a picture of, him, of you guys doing that? Because I, <laughs> I want that. <laughs> if you send me a picture of you guys doing that, then I might consider following you around. Singing I'll do it. I'll, I'll send you a whole video of me dancing to it. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. If you don't want to follow me every day, maybe you could just like in the morning, you could just sing me awake. With just every day. Just smile. Ba, ba, yeah. Ba, ba, yes. Ba. That'd be a great way to wake up. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. That would be, it could be your alarm. <laughs> It's there you a, go. See, I picture you doing that like in a in a just a giant on a giant spectrum, like zippity doo dah. Remember that zippity doo dah? Yep. With the little with the little birds and the and just the all the people like joining in and dancing. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> zippity doo dah. <laughs> All right, we got to go. I, mean, I could talk okay. to you forever. I could, but we got to go. Uh, okay, okay, well, it's so great to meet you guys. <laughs> uh, you want to take us out? since Because you're, you're not doing the other two shows with me. So, yeah, that's right. All right, so go ahead. All right. It's all you. Thank you for listening to the Chris Top Program. And until we broadcast again, please remember this. Life is good, and we are gone. <laughs> Maybe a door, things might be looking grim. I guess it's time for an acronym. Two, three, four.